Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So this week I read Bluettes by Maggie Nelson, which I read once before in undergrad a long time ago. I know I liked it then, but I didn't really remember much about it, so this kind of felt like a fresh experience reading it this time. It's another one of those interesting books where the genre you classify this as is a bit murky. The back of the book says essay slash literature. It definitely has some essay elements and it also has some things in it that feel like poetry. I do think sometimes because essay uh, in the creative sense is sometimes hard to define, it becomes a kind of catch-all for things that don't neatly fit into a genre box. But I always uh, like reading things like this. Um, it's nice to be surprised not just by language and content, but the form, the writing, and the ideas come in. It's really interesting to see writers play with that and challenge that. So this is a little book all about the color blue. So it's interesting, the writer is sort of talking about the process of writing it within it and saying that for years she was telling people, oh, I'm working on a project about the color blue and that that phrase had a kind of mystery to it and she enjoyed just telling people that she was planning on doing that project. So there's a lot of this that is, yes, literally about the color blue. She talks about other writers talking about blue. She talks about visual arts. There's some science of blue in here. There's some history of blue. And a lot of it is exploring why she is so drawn to it, why she feels in love with a color. But it's also about some other things. There's a lot of themes in here about grief and loss. So you sort of get through the book as you read it that the speaker is going through a difficult period in their life. They seem to have been in a relationship that was not entirely healthy that they've gotten out of and they're heartbroken and they've lost this love and they're coping with that over the course of this book. We see other kinds of loss represented in here. There's several sections in the latter half of the book about the speaker's friend who um, had a spinal cord injury and is paralyzed and all of the things that she loses in that and sort of grieving the loss of that part of her life. So we're seeing this loss of things, loss of things that you love coming up in different ways. And there's, you know, talk about depression in here and there's talk about how you cope and deal with things and get by. So in that light, in those sub-themes, this focus on blue becomes a kind of fixation, a distraction from these greater issues. And the blue itself, it gets sort of more and more complicated as the book goes on, but it becomes a metaphor for that lost love that the speaker experiences. So that's a very poetic concept of having this outer meaning, the sort of meaning that's obvious and upfront, and then what the inner meaning is, what the metaphor is. I think having writing that is layered like that adds a richness to it, makes it really rereadable. It's something I like to see in a lot of the poetry I read. And you know, Maggie Nelson is a poet, even though this is classified as essays, this particular book. So you see those principles, that um, meaning affecting this book too. I am always interested to see how poets write in other genres. I always think it's really interesting to see how they handle other mediums differently. 
Because I do think there, there's a lot of differences in how writers who are accustomed to certain genres see language. Something that I thought was really cool in this book is that she talks about visual art a lot. There is definitely a certain amount of research in this book. So I sort of found myself when she was describing some piece of art, like getting my phone out and googling it and looking at what she's describing. So that added a fun element to it. Visual art is something that I don't know that much about. It's like a big wide world of possibilities that I've only sort of touched in, but I'm definitely interested in it. I do see how visual art feels connected to poetry in some way, so it's nice to learn a little bit more about it. And it's not just the visual art. She talks about blue in the context of several different mediums, and she talks about history and all these interesting things, and it prompted some really good Google dives. So I feel like I learned some interesting things in this, which is definitely an element you would expect from something that's more like an essay. So there is an epigraph to this collection. And were it true, we do not think all philosophy is worth one hour of pain. Pascal. So like right off the bat, this pain, this loss that's going to be a theme throughout is in the epigraph. And I think right from the beginning, even though the first paragraph is about the color blue, I think we know it's going to be about much more than that. So I want to read a section that really stood out to me. The format of this is interesting. So it has these um, numbered sections breaking it up. Um, they're obviously like connected to each other. It does read like an essay still, but it's broken up in an interesting way. But what I'm going to start with is number 85. One afternoon in 2006 at a bookstore in Los Angeles, I pick up a book called The Deepest Blue. Having expected a chromatic treatise, I am embarrassed when I see the subtitle, How Women Face and Overcome Depression. I quickly return it to its shelf. Eight months later, I order the book online. Number 86. The implication of the title is that men get blue, but women get the deepest blue. Another form of ag aggrandizement, to be sure. One which brings to mind a night I spent in an emergency room in Brooklyn years ago. Some mystery ailment, a burning in my lower left side, a woman wailing in the waiting room about having gas from fried chicken, though she looked riddled with crack and sadness, not gas from fried chicken. A young doctor inside asked me to rate my pain on a scale of 1 to 10. I was flummoxed. I felt as though I shouldn't be there at all. I said 6. He said to the nurse, write down 8, since women always underestimate their pain. Men always say 11, he said. I didn't believe him, but I supposed he might know. So there's some storytelling in there. We're getting into this theme of depression that is reoccurring in the book and it's a specific feminine kind of depression that she's writing about. So you can kind of see from that section how blue becomes like a seed that starts an interesting tangent about something a little different. Everything sort of grows out of this idea of blue. So another little section I want to read uh, is number 152. Holiness and evilness aside, no one could rightly call blue a festive color. You don't go looking for a party in a color that hospitals have used to calm crying infants or sedate the emotionally disturbed. Ancient Egyptians wrapped their mummies in blue cloth. Ancient Celtic warriors dyed their bodies with woad before heading off to battle. The Aztecs smeared the chest of their sacrificial victims with blue paint before scooping their hearts out on the altar. The story of indigo is, at least in part, the story of slavery, riots, and misery. Blue does, however, 
always have a place at the carnival. So that's an interesting section to me. We're seeing her um, assign emotions and history and background to this color and um, give it some greater importance than we would usually associate it with. And these connections to color and emotion happen through the entire book. So something else about this book, a more minor thing, is that it is a really beautifully designed book. It's visually really nice, which it ought to be from a book that's so much about visuals. But yeah, this is a really pretty book to have on your shelf, and I'm definitely the kind of person who gets excited when I see a really pretty book. I do find this to be really accessible writing. I think the way it's broken up with those like little short one paragraph length sections, um, it's very readable for people who just want to read a couple pages of something a day. I think it also lends itself really well to just one sitting, just getting through the whole thing. Because even though it is broken down in those numbers, it is one complete essay, one thought leads to another, right? It's not um, something broken down into chapters. You know, it's under a hundred pages. It's a pretty quick read. It was good for me this week when I was busy, but it packs a lot of punch. There's a lot of deep thought in here. It's a really interesting one. And it's a unique vehicle to get a glimpse into someone's mind and get a deeper philosophical kind of understanding of loss and how we cope with it. So if those things appeal to you, this might be something you're interested in. Maggie Nelson has a lot of different work out there, a lot of poetry out there, so I'm a fan of her, definitely interested in reading more. All right, well, that's all I have for this week. Thanks for watching.